If you look at the DORA metrics, implicitly one of the biggest predictors of success for software projects is working in small steps. One of the driving forces that both enables and promotes our ability to proceed in small steps is continuous integration. So how do you work in small steps and practice continuous integration if you're building big features? Hi, I'm Dave Farley of Continuous Delivery. Welcome to my channel. And if you haven't been here before, please do hit subscribe. And if you enjoy the content today, hit like as well. Thanks to our sponsor for this video, Launch Darkly. Launch Darkly is a first of its kind scalable feature management platform that allows development teams to innovate faster by transforming how software is delivered to customers. If you'd like to learn more, you can book a demo to see their platform in action. There's a link in the description below. I've recently written a new advice guide on the topic of testing in production. Uh, I regularly release guides like this for subscribers to my mail list. So if you'd like a copy of this guide and more guides like it, there's a link in the description to this video that allows you to join my mail list. Continuous integration matters because of the quality of the feedback that it delivers. One of my favourite descriptions of it comes from the C2 wiki, where the ideas of extreme programming were described for the first time in public. In it, they said, what if engineers didn't hold on to modules for more than a moment? What if they made their correct change and presto, everyone's computer instantly had that version of the module? You wouldn't ever have integration hell because the systems would always be integrated. You wouldn't need code ownership because there wouldn't be any conflicts to worry about. Continuous integration is about trying to achieve as close an approximation to that ideal as we sensibly can. Now continuous might be a bit of an exaggeration, but again, the inventors chose it with some care. In their words, Continuous integration is a slogan, not a description. It's deliberately overstated to emphasize that daily builds are not enough. So continuous integration demands of us that we commit small changes multiple times per day. These days, all of the continuous integration experts that I know of will grudgingly admit at least once per day as the minimum qualifying frequency for integration. But they'd all recommend that you integrate more frequently than that, and ideally quite a lot more frequently than that. Then along comes continuous delivery. Continuous delivery is continuous integration's big brother. Now, not only do we want to know that our changes work with everyone else's multiple times per day, now we also want to know that they're releasable. So continuous delivery says that we work so that our code is always releasable. After every small change, we can release our code into production. Continuous delivery imposes a high standard for us on releasability. At the end of the continuous delivery pipeline, there should be no more work to do before you're ready to release the change. Now, I think that these ideas may be more important than they seem on the surface. I've been talking about them for a long time now on this channel and in other places. And I often get some pushback because these ideas challenge things that people like. But I think these ideas go a bit deeper than that. This isn't really about likes and dislikes. I think that with these ideas, we're touching on something a bit more fundamental than that. In continuous integration, we're evaluating the truth of our system. CI is about maintaining the idea of the current version of our system as something important, different from other versions. If we work as part of a team, then no one person has access to that truth of the system. We're working in parallel, so at any instant, my version of the truth is different from yours. So the real truth of the system is some combination of our individual local truths. I can make a change that invalidates your truth, and you can make a change that invalidates mine. If we each work on separate branches working in parallel, it doesn't matter how many times you pull from the shared truth if I'm not committing my version of it. You won't see my changes, so you won't see the truth of the system. 
We only get to see the truth at the point when the last one of us merges our changes. As soon as you have two copies of information in different places, each of them changing, you're in a complex world. Inevitably, in this circumstance, the longer you wait to bring them together, the more they will diverge and so the more complex the task of merging them becomes. This is a risk and the cost of this risk is hard to estimate. But what the data says is that if you wait for more than a day to merge the changes, then you will produce software of lower quality more slowly. There are lots of reasons for this, and I talk about them in some other videos. So continuous integration says all of us should evaluate all of our changes together at least once per day. And it does that not because it's cool or because Kent Beck told us to, but because the point of integration is the only time momentarily when we get to see the truth of our system. This isn't a choice or a preference, this is a fact. We can try to mitigate the costs of not knowing the truth by doing things like not allowing devs to work on the same parts of the code base. But now you're doing more work and adding extra constraints that cause other kinds of problems. So continuous integration keeps the truth of our system in vision in a way that nothing else can. I said earlier, CI says we should evaluate our changes at least once per day. So what does evaluate mean? We may learn something by simply merging our changes and checking that they compile if we're using a compiled language. But to really evaluate them, we need to know that they work together. So we need some tests too. In CI, the best way to work is with test-driven development and practice red-green refactor commit. After each tiny increment in the behavior of our system defined by a test-driven development created unit test, we commit our changes and continuous integration runs everyone's tests together. Continuous delivery takes this a step further and says that after every one of these tiny steps, if all of the tests pass, our system should be releasable. Not necessarily released, that's a different question, but ready for release with no more work. But wait, that means that we have to compile whole new features in a single commit with a single test. Well, no, of course not. But if that question was going through your mind, you're clearly seeing the problem that is our real focus for today. How do you develop sometimes complex features, keeping the system releasable after every single tiny commit? The answer that springs to most people's minds at this point is usually feature flags. And that's a useful answer, but it isn't the only one and it isn't even the one that I'd usually start with. Structurally, there are three strategies in all, and each has its place. Let's start with feature flags. These are kind of a software switch that through configuration allows us to define which version of the code you see when you're using it. Imagine that you have a new feature that you want to add to your system. You develop the new feature, but want to be able to try it out first. If you built it on a branch first, then this works against continuous integration. So that's not going to work as well. So to keep the code releasable so that you can practice continuous delivery for your new feature, as well as for the rest of the system, you need to be able to release the code for your new feature before it's finished. So at the point or points in our system where our new code will interact with everything else, we add a switch a toggle or a flag that allows us or prevents us access to the new feature. Now we can have the flag turned off, preventing access uh, in production until the feature is finished and we allow ourselves the time to evolve our solution, commit by small commit. Getting a clearer picture of where we stand after every small commit and how our code works with everybody else's. We get to keep all the benefits of continuous integration and continuous delivery and making change in smaller, safer steps. This also means that at the point when you are ready to flip the switch in production, if something nasty happens, you can flick it back quickly and return to what was working before. This is a very good strategy. It gives you a lot more freedom to develop systems more incrementally. 
In continuous delivery terminology, this is called separating deployment from release. We're willing to deploy frequently into production and we release less frequently. That's not all there is to feature toggling though. We're talking about software here, so our switches can be smart. We could define different groups of users and specify the appropriate flag setting for each group. At first, we could imagine a testing group so that if someone in that group accessed the system, they could see and interact with the new feature, even in production while everybody else saw the system without it. We could also do smarter things than that allocating new features to interesting groups or maybe even randomly and so now we can do things like A-B testing on features and measure their impact on our system and on our business. This is an extremely powerful technique giving us a lot of freedom and flexibility to make and control changes to our systems. There are good tools to support the use of feature flags and the most well known is probably from our sponsor today Launch Darkly. Since Launch Darkly feature flags exist throughout the development process from development to production, you can use the same mechanisms to configure the settings and so test exactly the configuration that you will choose to release. I've included a link to the demo of all these features in the description to this video, so do check it out. These sorts of tools are a good idea. They can do things like secure the communication of flags to make sure that bad people don't get control of your system, and they can send toggles of the flags quickly and efficiently. This answers one of the commonest questions that I get asked about adopting continuous delivery. How do I keep my system working while I'm developing features that take more than a single commit? Well, this is one way to solve this problem. The advantages of working this way are very significant, but the biggest one is that we can now work more incrementally. We can make whatever changes we need, whether they're narrowly scoped or broad brush. We can use refactoring to prepare for a new feature. And we can do all of this step by tiny step. Each step is simpler so that it makes it easier to spot mistakes. And in the worst possible case where one of these small changes is a misstep, we can step back the short distance to where we were, discarding the misstep, and continue with another attempt. This way of working predicts higher scores on the Dora metrics of stability and throughput, which by definition means that you are building better software faster. There are two other strategies that can help too. Feature flags are a great tool, but one of the questions that they pose is what should we test? Flag on or flag off? Well, if you can switch this in production, you should probably test both, which is fine if you only have one flag, but what if you have 500? Now there are too many configurable different routes to test. Feature flags represent another form of information hiding, really. It's a lot less restrictive than taking a branch in our version control system, but it still hides information behind the flag. Flags are better than branching because they branch at the level of the behavior of the system rather than at the level of the source code of the system. So all the code is there and available to change in development. But when we're interested in the behavior, as we are in the testing of our system, flags can still obscure the picture. To solve this problem, there's another approach that can help. This is called dark launching. The idea here is that we leave our new behavior in place. So we can deploy it and test it, but we don't make it available to users until we're ready. This can take a lot of different forms. You can imagine a web application where we simply don't add the URL to the, that points to the new feature until we're ready to release it. Or maybe a service where we can start off with the shell of a service that isn't connected to other services yet. We can control access to our new work, maybe only giving the URL to our new feature or access to the new service to some people. Or once again, we could make this a little smarter, using switches and access control, allowing the testers in, but not the general public. This approach has an advantage in that we can choose to run the new stuff live in production before it's ready for real use. This isn't a switch new or old anymore. This is a little bit more complicated. We, we need to think about the implications of running 
part complete new features in production alongside the rest of our system. But for some kinds of systems and some kinds of changes, this is a fantastic approach. It works best for modular systems where we can com be confident that no information that shouldn't will leak out and affect other parts of the system in use. And depending on the nature of the new feature, this can be difficult or, or, or easy. But now we're back to one version of the system and we can test that. The last tool in our toolbox to keep things releasable is branch by abstraction. Branch by abstraction is a way of making a large scale change in a gradual way. We do this by refactoring what we have to the point where the existing version of our system uses this interface, but still talking to the old implementation. Now we create a new implementation of the interface that works in the new way. This approach works very well at all resolutions of detail. We can do this for a single function or for whole systems. There are lots of advantages to this approach. One of them is that we can choose to run both versions in parallel and compare the results. We can do A-B testing or use this as a strategy for canary releasing, gradually moving users over to the new version. Pinterest rewrote their whole user interface a few years ago and ran two versions of their system in production for over a year. These are three strategies that allow us to practice continuous integration and continuous delivery without being irresponsible. These approaches are different and often surprising to people who haven't thought about this way of working before. But they do work. They do work at scale and they do work in highly complex and safety critical systems. In fact, they work better than any of the alternatives that we've found so far. This is not about cowboy operators or only for people with toy web applications. This is a strategy employed by many of the biggest, most successful software companies in the world. For ease of explanation, I've treated these three strat strategies separately. In reality, it usually makes sense to mix and match. For some features, dark launching is best, for others, feature flags. You can combine these approaches using feature flag techniques to control the abstractions used in branch by abstraction or for getting access to dark launched features. This is a toolbox. You pick the tools you need to fit the problem that you're solving. The launch darkly tools for feature flags make it easy to use them and adopt them for your own system. For me, the most important idea here though is continuous integration. Continuous integration allows us to stay focused on that truth of our system. These tools matter and they're important because they allow us to do that. And that matters because that's how we build better software faster. Thank you very much for watching today. Uh, if you've enjoyed the content and enjoyed the channel in general, please consider supporting us through Patreon. There's a link in the description below. Bye bye.